Alright guys, welcome back to the shop. It is Sunday morning. It was a bit cool this morning. It got down to 24. And it's going to warm up to almost 60 today. I've got to put out some fertilizer after after lunch when it warms up some. But I thought while it was cool, we would uh, come on down to the shop and try to get this transfer case installed. As you can see, I've installed the front output yoke and uh it does have a little bit of in play in it it's got a good bit of in play in it but without having one to actually test to see if there's not supposed to be any in play whatsoever i don't know if that's right or not I can only go by what the book is showing and what the book is saying because I've never rebuilt one of these things before. But uh, uh, the only thing that uh, it says, uh, let's see if it tells you anything, align front output shaft thrust bearing assembly and front case correct installation sequences, thick race, thrust bearing, thin race. Install front output shaft. It don't say anything about checking in play. Uh, there's no uh, nothing in here whatsoever about checking in play. It just says thick, thin, and in between thrust bearing. So, and even when it says install the yoke, uh, install the yoke seal washer and yoke nut. Well, install front yoke, install the seal washer and yoke nut, tighten nuts to 120 foot pounds. Well, I tighten this nut with an impact because there's really no way with it off the truck to keep that damn thing from turning to get 120 foot pounds. Unless you had somebody here helping with a couple of bolts in here and a pry bar and everything holding it. Uh, I think that's been a, that being a lock nut. Uh, and I put it on with the impact. I figure it's got at least 120 foot pounds. That being said, all we need now is to install our uh, front gasket and walk it over to the truck. So let's get our gasket on. So here's our front gasket. Notice here it's got uh, little places you can cut out to the center one, but we're going to leave it because we actually do have slots in the in the adapter and that also helps line it up right here on this so what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite 151 on here and I'm just going to go just down this area right here and get come out and just a thin bead and this stuff is thin that and we'll install our gasket and I don't think there's any particular way this thing has to be installed as long as your all your boat holes line up and it line up there so if they're gonna line up here yep. well no no that one don't line up damn Maybe I should have marked this before I stuck it on here. Ah, we got it. So, you might want to do that. Because these bolt holes are not evenly spaced. And that gasket ain't going to go on but one way. And I'll hold her gasket on. Now you could go on the other side, on this side, and put 
uh, a thin layer on it, but I think I'm going to just do that to the uh, adapter, not to the gasket. So let's go get our bolts uh, for this. And I'll get you set up over at the truck frame. And we'll try to get this thing slid on. Remember this empty weighs about 70 to 75 pounds. So it is a it is a handful. And uh, of course it's always helpful to have somebody helping you, but I have put them in by myself, so I'm not really too concerned about it. But uh, anyway, let's get let's get it installed. All right, so you will uh, see that I have already installed the skid plate. It's going to be a lot easier to do it before you put the transfer case in. Yep, this thing's heavy. Let's set it where I can get in here without tripping over these fuel lines. And hopefully, this thing will just line right up. Back up. Got to put some damn. Forgot to put my ceiling on. Shit. Oh god. Damn it. Yes, damn boys. I have got no room. y'all over here on the other side because I'm gonna be blocking y'all. Alright. Here's the problem is this got dang wood right here. I think I can get it out of the way. Uh I think I'm gonna go ahead and get some Loctite and put on this. Hopefully this will go nowhere but dang I'm gonna climb over this over here. You go no war transfer case. Uh, maybe it'll work right here. And we just made it on the outside edge. Yep, I'll fill my boat hole up. Fun Getting down through here. Now, dang old already running out of it. Thought I had it wiped down good, but apparently I don't. Okay, now the fun part, line this joker up. And hopefully everything lined up right. It'll drop right in. Make sure our bow holes still lined up and they look good. Now, that's how you're going to do it. You need to don't have it clocked way up. That ain't going to work. Okay. Now, it is a good idea to put some blue Loctite on these bolts. You can see, maybe, that they had some on here. So, I'm going to try. I don't know if I have enough. But I'm going to try to put some back on here. As long as my gasket didn't move, it'll be all right.
Oh, by the way, I did degrease this uh, transmission. It's uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but if you see a before and after shot, it definitely looks 100% better, even though it ain't 100% uh, clean. But I spent probably a good hour out here the other day. Course, the last one's this first one I put in. Ooh. Gotta get some more this lock tight. About out. We don't have enough to do it. Got a little bit on there. Gotta get some more. This uh, Loctite does not harden on the outside. It is, it only hardens where there's no oxygen. So between the, the mating surfaces. That's why they call it anaerobic. It works, it, it, it cures in the presence of no oxygen. What you think? How does it keep from curing in the damn tube? I don't know. How that works. Maybe once it's exposed to oxygen. It's uh, activated maybe. I don't know. All right, guys, so the only thing I got left to hook up is the speedometer right there in that hole. And I'm, I'm waiting on the seal kit for it. I got it ordered, so it should be here sometime by the end of the week. And we'll get the speedometer in there. I'll get the rear drive shaft cleaned up. I'm going to replace both U joints in it, and we'll get it uh, painted and ready to go back in. I will actually we'll get it in because it has to be slid up in the end to keep the uh, fluid from pouring out. I'm probably going to go ahead and drain the, the oil out of this transmission and change it while I'm at it. You can see that transmission looks dirty. What I was using was just uh, my parts washer degreaser on it. And then I come back and rinsed it off, and boy, I, I made a mess all over the frame and everything else. Maybe you can see. If I can zoom in, you can see that crap all over my frame there. So I'm going to have to take some uh, soap and water to this thing, <laughs> especially the frame, and wash all that uh, crap off it. It looked like it had rinsed it off with the water, but it didn't. It just kind of rinsed the heavy stuff out. So, I was going to paint the transmission, and, but I, uh, that's, that's, I don't know, I don't know if I will or not. I would like to paint the bell housing though, because that red, that orange, or whatever the hell you want to call it, I guess it's orange, uh, just don't really go good with that black motor, and of course I got to repaint my, uh, black, uh, my valve covers, I got to repaint those. Um, probably gonna have to damn uh, soda blast them to get that old paint off or take them down to my buddy's uh, 
uh, machine shop and let him run through his uh, high pressure hot water cleaner probably take the paint right off of it but anyway guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the, vid the video series on on the rebuilding of this transfer case uh, I did run it through the selectors to make sure it wasn't binding up and we had neutral right now it's in neutral and uh, hopefully we won't have to adjust it because it shouldn't be no different you know if you change out a rod you have to adjust that little nut right here you have to adjust this and of course there's a procedure on that but hopefully we won't have to fool with that so anyway guys take care please rate comment and subscribe